Hi everyone, my name is Florian Seitz from the University of Basel and this is a presentation for the symposium Testing a Theory of Similarity in Preferential Choice for the 2021 meeting of the Cognitive Science Society. In my presentation, I will talk about a simplification of similarity-based processes in speeded categorization. And this is joint work with Bettina von Helversen, Rebecca Albrecht, Jörg Rieskamp and Jana Jarecki from the Universities of Basel and Bremen. There is a pre-registration available under the link displayed above. Please feel free to check it out. By categorization, I mean assigning objects to categories. One major cognitive theory of human categorization assumes that people assign similar objects to the same category. For instance, the object displayed below probably belongs to category A. Why? Because it is similar to the objects to the members of category A in the red feature, the blue feature, and the yellow feature. And hence, objects that have similar feature values tendentially belong to the same category. By relying on such similarity-based categorizations, people can learn a variety of category structures and achieve a high categorization accuracy. And past research has found that under time pressure, Categorization accuracy typically decreases but remains at a high level. For instance, after learning one of two uh, category structures, the onset of time pressure reduces choice accuracy by about 10 percentage points, but accuracy remains high at about 80 to 90% accuracy. In a similar experiment, it was found that with increasing uh, time pressure, categorization accuracy gradually decreases, but remains substantial at about 70% accuracy, and thus well above the accuracy of 50% that would result from random choice. In this project, we investigate how people cope with time pressure in similarity-based categorizations. And we do so by means of cognitive modeling within the framework of the generalized context model. The generalized context model is one of the most popular similarity-based models of categorization, and it assumes that the similarity to all previously experienced uh, category members called exemplars determines categorization. Specifically, given an object I and an object J, the generalized context model calculates the difference between the two objects for each feature. So for instance, object I and object J differ by one unit on the blue feature. Then the generalized context model um, weights each of those differences and calculates a sum of these weighted differences across features. In our example, we might, for instance, uh, yield a overall difference of one. Note that these attention weights are free model parameters that are estimated to participant data. This overall distance or difference is then transformed into a measure of psychological similarity, where high overall differences yield low similarity and vice versa. In our example, a similarity of 0 0.37 might result. And the parameter lambda here again is a free model parameter. The model repeats the computation of similarity for all the previously experienced exemplars. And the evidence that object I belongs to category A is now the sum of the similarities to all the exemplars from category A divided by the sum of the similarities to all the exemplars from category A and category B. Mathematically, this is noted as the share of similarities. And this category evidence is further transformed uh, into response probabilities with the choice a rule, with a choice rule function with the softmax function. And this softmax function has one free parameter as well, uh, tau called temperature, and low values 
for temperature generate very deterministic responses and large value for tau generate less deterministic uh, category responses. So the parameter tau governs the determinism with which people categorize objects. Mathematically, the softmax function is given here. And to give a quick numerical example, here you see the similarities to all the exemplars from the two categories separated by color. And the evidence that object I belongs to category A is given here and is further transformed into a choice probability of 0.96 in favor of category A and thus 0 0.04 for category B. In other words, the generalized context model here very deterministically assigns object I into category A, which is in line with our intuition from the very beginning. Now, within this framework of the generalized context model, we implemented and compared three mechanisms to cope with time pressure. One way to cope with time pressure in similarity-based categorizations is to simplify the computation of similarities. Specifically, instead of computing continuous feature value differences between objects, the simplified similarity only counts the number of differing features but ignores the precise, the precise continuous feature value differences. Returning to our example from before, the simplified similarity uh, would compute that object I and J uh, differ on two features, but would ignore how much they differ on these features. And by doing so, a similarity of 0.51 would result compared to the similarity of 0.37 under the original model. A second way to cope with time pressure um, might be to focus attention to one feature. So instead of attending to all features, or people uh, might only attend to the red feature and infer that the two objects are maximally similar to each other. A third way to cope with time pressure might be a reduced choice sensitivity. This means that people may have a lower decision threshold yielding less deterministic responses. This mechanism is implemented in the parameter tau of the softmax function. Remember that large values uh, for tau yield deterministic responses, uh, or, sorry, less deterministic responses and small values yield deterministic responses. In the example before, the evidence that object I belongs to category A was 0.90. And we used a very small uh, value for tau to get this very deterministic response probability in favor of category A. Alternatively, we might use a high value for tau and as you see here, choice probability now sh shifts towards random choice. Choice probability is now substantially lower, meaning that the model predicts that people respond less deterministically. We compare these three mechanisms to cope with time pressure in a binary categorization task. Participants learn to classify A stimuli with feedback into two categories. Participants saw a stimulus, classified it by pressing a key, and got feedback. Then they saw another stimulus, classified it, and got feedback, and so forth, until they were 80% correct and had the last 24 trials correct as well. Participants needed about 200 trials to reach this learning criterion. Then, participants classified six new stimuli in the transfer phase. And these new stimuli were select selected by simulation-based optimal experimental design, such that the uh, original generalized context model and the model version with simplified similarities yield opposite category predictions given the examples from the learning phase. Half of the participants experienced time pressure in the transfer phase, 
and time pressure was set to 400 milliseconds plus 30 percent of the median response time in the last 100 learning trials of the respective participants. This yielded response deadlines of somewhat below one second uh, aggregated across participants. Participants got no feedback in the transfer phase. Now let's look at the results from this transfer phase. On the x-axis, you see the six new stimuli. And each stimulus is coded by three digits, where each digit corresponds to the value of the respective feature. So for instance, stimulus 003 denotes a stimulus that has the feature value, value 0 on the first feature, 0 on the second feature, and 3 on the third feature. I grouped stimuli 221, 231, 321, and 331 together because they yield very similar model predictions and also categorizations. In the condition with that time pressure, we expected that people's categorization would follow the predictions of the original generalized context model described here as baseline. And here you see these, the prediction of the original generalized context model. It's classifies stimulus 100 rather into category A and the remaining stimuli rather into category B. And when we now plot people's actual categorization behavior, we see that these predictions match people's categorization for the stimuli 003 and 100, but they have quite some trouble to, to, to map the participants' categorizations for this group of stimuli in the middle. Interestingly. But more importantly, and in the focus of our project, let's turn to the results in the condition with time pressure. Remember that we compared three mechanisms to cope with time pressure. Simplified similarity only counts the number of differing features, and here you see the predictions that the model version with simplified similarities makes. It assigns stimulus 100 into category B and the remaining stimuli into category A, opposed to the original model shown before. The attention focus model attends only to one feature, and it makes very deterministic categorization predictions where the direction depends on which feature you focus. Note that we did not include a focus on the second feature because this model could not be uh, discriminated from a random choice model predicting choice probabilities of 0.50 in our given category structure and design. The third mechanism, lower choice sensitivity, makes similar predictions as the original model, however shifted towards random choice classification. And when we now plot people's classifications in the condition with time pressure, we see that these classifications match the model with lower choice sensitivity best. Now, these are the results for the aggregated level, on the aggregated level. To additionally um, investigate inter-individual differences in cognitive processes, we conducted a strategy classification based on a KQ weights for the different models for each participant. In this figure, you see on the x-axis the participants, and each participant will be represented by one bar. And the Akeki weights for the different models are stacked upon each other per participant. Note that all of these Akeki weights come from out of sample predictions for the transfer phase. And these predictions are out of sample predictions because we fitted all parameters of the models to people's learning data and then predicted the transfer data. In this model comparison using Akeki weights, we additionally included a random choice model predicting 0.50 response probabilities. And what you see here, interestingly, is that no single model can exclusively describe all the participants. Rather, different participants seemed to use different cognitive processes um, under time pressure. 
some people used simplified similarities, some people used an attention focus, and some people used a lower choice sensitivity. And even few participants were best described by a model that uh, by the random choice model. And a further few participants were could not be clearly described by any of the models. So from this figure, I want you to retain that no single model could describe all of, our, of the participants, but rather different participants seem to use different cognitive processes. Because, however, the model with the lower choice sensitivity uh, described aggregated categorizations very well, we conducted explorative uh, choice inconsistency analysis on the transfer phase data. Specifically, we uh, fitted or estimated the parameter tau temperature on uh, the test phase data uh, and all other parameters were kept by from the original estimations. And then we compared the estimated values for parameter tau across the two time pressure conditions. And this is exactly what you see in this plot. Specifically, you see that the est estimated values for parameter tau are substantially higher than in the condition with time pressure than in the condition without time pressure. And higher values for parameter tau mean a lower choice sensitivity or less deterministic responses. And this means, irrespective of which model best described a given participant in the time pressure condition, the values for parameter tau indicate that people tended to have lower choice sensitivity, tended to respond less deterministically in the condition with time pressure than in a condition without time pressure. In sum, in this experiment, we found substantial evidence that time pressure lowers people's choice sensitivity. We could not find very clear evidence for an attention focus and simplified similarities. Both models describe uh, several participants in the individual model comparisons. However, none of these models was um, could potentially describe all of the participants, and they fared not very well in the aggregate um, analysis. We corroborated these findings in a second experiment where people made pairwise similarity judgments. And we found again that time pressure reduced people's choice sensitivity. And in a nutshell, in this experiment, basically we found that irrespective of time pressure, people tended to make a similarity judgments in line with the predictions of the original generalized context model. And the onset of time pressure only reduced people's choice sensitivity. So in sum, our results suggest that in categorizations and similarity judgments under time pressure, people do not simplify psychological similarity nor ignore features but they respond less deterministically. Thank you for your attention.